JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso recording with the me Dyer's only Charles um <clears throat> today's the nineteenth of January twenty twenty two guys. Uh so yep, welcome everyone, welcome to this um yeah, as I said, Wednesday's recording. Um so as always, we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our uh, risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, guys, um, before we jump in into the charts, um, as always, uh, just a quick um, mentioning of our um, JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course, our JFD Bank website, and specifically our JFD research page, which is also updated on a daily basis, so you have to check us out here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. So. As I mentioned before, guys, um, unfortunately, I do have to run these videos um, as recording uh, due to uh, me not running, well, not running these videos from my usual spot. So, uh, so yep, um, for now, uh, for now, it will be like this. So hopefully from next week, we can come back to live. Uh, but of course, I'll keep you updated on that. So, um so now then jumping, let's jump into the charts, guys. Though the yep, finally Nikkei. Um, so Nikkei dropped uh, through its lower side of the triangle pattern, as you can see here, and uh, yep, it stayed below it, and, and it also dropped below this twenty-seven thousand eight hundred eighty-nine zone confirming a uh, forthcoming lower low here and also managing to overcome actually the um, this low here the lowest point of December near the uh, 27,594 zone so and managed to stay below it it came very close to testing the uh, lowest point of October but just fell shy by a few points from doing that and as you can see um, it is not looking good here. So, uh, don't get me wrong, I mean, um, for now, I'm, I'm thinking maybe there could be a bit of a retracement, maybe a bounce back. Um, however, um, however, if it, for example, stays either maybe below this 27,594 zone or, uh, or in general stays somewhere below the um, below the lower side of this triangle, which we can extend here in the lower side a little bit. If it stays somewhere below that, then well, I mean, maybe uh, this is going to be a kind of a an indication that we could be drifting further south guys so at the moment let's be very careful let's go slowly on this one Nikkei uh, we do know that Nikkei likes to uh, to kind of trade a bit on the choppy side here um, so yeah uh, let's uh, like I said let's stay uh, let's stay careful yes I'm like I said I'm leaning towards the downside uh, in the near term but um, in a way like I said don't forget that we might see maybe a bit of a, a retracement here at some point um, and uh, but if it stays below the lower side of the triangle then yes we could uh, continue aiming lower now uh, Shanghai composite so Shanghai composite here is um, also also drifting lower, and no, I should say, uh, it also drifted lower. It's still trading. We still have around half la half an hour left because I'm running this recording half an hour before uh, my usual uh, live uh, videos. So yeah, I mean, we do have, uh, like I said, half an hour left here of trading on on Shanghai Composite. And uh, yeah, look at this. I mean, uh, I kept on talking about this idea, and I was saying that this whole week, and I was saying that um, we might see that. Yeah, we might see that reversal. So yes, we got that reversal and we climbed back about the 208 EMA. However, maybe it's going to be something like we um, 
like we had here for example re uh, recently where or or back here in in august uh, when initially yes we drifted lower but then the next day we kind of climbed back above this uh or the next trading session we climbed back above the uh the 200 day ema again and then actually after a while we reversed to the downside and fell below the 200 day ema again if we do that again if if that's going to be the case right now, well, um, yes, uh, this is going to be quite interesting because if we drop again and if we continue uh, and we continue to trade below that 200 day EMA, well, maybe uh, this could be that uh, good stepping point for more sellers. But again, I'm not saying anything yet. Uh, for now, let's just be very careful because even with the upside, although uh, we are kind of still hanging above this upside line, we're we're kind of still below this downside line. So if you're looking, if you want something a bit more reassuring, then well, just probably wait for a break of that um, of that downside line, and then yes, we could take it from there, guys. So that's kind of the game plan, and also if you're looking for something reassuring for the downside, keep your eyes on the current lowest point of January, near the 3,519, so yeah, and then we'll take it from there. So now then, uh, jumping into the German index, DAX. So, yeah, um, good, good um, moves lower here. <clears throat> if you remember yesterday in, uh, in my morning video, I talked about this one, and uh, I said to you that um, keep your eyes on that hurdle, that fifteen thousand eight hundred and eighty zone, because if that gets broken, well, I mean, we could see a further, uh, we could see a further move lower here, a, a bit of a uh, drift to the downside. But my my initial target will be this fifteen thousand seven hundred and twenty-four zone, which we managed to reach. So that's um, good news, I would say, so for the sellers. But we also managed to overcome it, and we also managed to reach the one hundred eight EMA, which we also kind of broke uh, just briefly. Um, but by the end of the trading session, the the bulls managed to lift the uh, the index back up here, and uh, we managed to stay above that 15,724 zone. So, if we take a look at the cash index right now and see where we are at this point in time before the kind of the uh, market open, uh, we'll see that the index is trading at around 15,692 zone, approximately around, around there. Um, so uh, we are basically below this uh, hurdle, below this hurdle and uh, I th and also I think just fractionally below the 100 day EMA now this is where the interesting bit comes in of course um, we will see, we're seeing that uh, um, I mean, if it if it wouldn't be for this tail, we could be saying that they, these are runaway gaps here. Um, and uh, yep, I mean, but again, we we're gonna open up somewhere around here probably. Um, that's gonna be interesting to watch if we can actually get a bit of a, a bit of a rebound from the uh, from that um, from that 100 day EMA. If we can, then of course keep your eyes on this hurdle, the the low of the 10th of January near the 15,724. If we somehow continue to trade below it then well to be honest I'm leaning a little bit more towards the downside here I mean initially I'll be targeting this area this key support zone roughly around that 15,600 zone so I'm not gonna uh, uh, so this area although the levels that I have here are the 15,593 and the 15,622 but approximately the 15,600 area is the one to watch and of course if that gets cleared then the next target is the upside line taken from the low the 11th of December of 2020 so <clears throat> uh, long story short for now guys um, the thing that you can do here is basically keep your eyes on the opening uh, at the moment like I said we are hanging near this uh, 100 day EMA if we continue to trade um, if we continue to trade near that or should I say above that maybe uh, we could see that little rebound but if suddenly we start uh, falling again below that 100 day EMA then well guys I mean this could be like I said opening the door towards slightly lower levels now the S&P 500 so uh, yesterday was a very bad day here and you can see why we have drifted lower we have 
broken the upside line these upside lines I spoke about this and but we found support near the 100 day EMA so um, if we're uh, looking at the cash index we'll see that the price is actually trading around 4551 zone so basically below the 100 day EMA and all this is not really looking good here for um, uh, for the uh, for the buyers and uh, yep this could mean that we could see a further move lower and initially what I'm going to be aiming here for is the the low of the 20th of December here near the uh, 4,531 zones then my next target is the the lowest point of December near the 4,495 territory right here um, and then we'll take it from there so basically in other words if it continues to trade below that 100 day EMA I'll slowly start aiming lower um, we could then aim also for the 200 day EMA here, but again, that'll come a little bit later for now. Let's go slowly step by step on this one. And uh, yep, for now, let's see what we can do in case this suddenly reverses sharply to the upside and climbs back above the above these upside lines, then well, uh, and above this 4638 zone, then yes, maybe we could uh, consider a, a move higher. But the only little issue here is, of course, this little short term tentative downside resistance line taken from the high of the 4th of January, which could come into play a little bit here. But if that gets cleared, certainly, yes, we'll go to the upside. But um, at the moment, um, we're leaning a little bit more towards the downside. Um, yesterday, of course, in terms of the um, the market, the US market, I mean, uh, the only uh, sector that um, kind of was um, uh, was performing uh, somewhat and that was the energy sector um, and uh, well I'll get to oil in a bit and uh, yep I mean for obvious reasons reasons why I understand why it was performing the best because oil was uh, pushing higher and uh, but I, every other sector was in the red especially technology so technology did take a big hit so it seems like um, at the moment the technology is uh, the technology sector is suffering a bit um, certainly don't get me wrong I mean for some it might uh, present opportunities um, um, and uh, but I, if you are picking your stocks uh, you know do those do those careful do that carefully uh, because well, not every not every technological stock might uh, then uh, let's say survive. So, um, for now, I mean, for now, um, I, again, the technological stocks are, are are right now kind of moving away from their tops. So, um, so that's quite you know normal. I mean, we are having that retracement. So, if you can wait this one out, I mean they should come back they should pick up the only question is right now uh when will that be but at the moment um we are seeing a uh, kind of a healthy correction which is okay so uh, but let's see if that healthy correction is not going to lead into something a little bit more uh, worse but and this leads me to nasdaq here so nasdaq drifted to the downside um it managed to stay below this highlighted territory i talked about this area this um 15357 territory I spoke about that level this highlighted one and we stayed below it at one point we did try to climb higher and uh, we did kind of reach that uh, 15,400 and slightly above it level um, but um, eventually it didn't really work out well here and uh, the index drifted lower and managed to reach or I would say it came very, very close to reaching the lowest point of uh, January. So um, for now, I would say if it continues to drop lower and if it falls below that lowest point of January near the 15,165 territory, this will confirm a forthcoming lower low. And uh, well, my next target will be that 200 day EMA here on our daily chart. And then it will be quite interesting to see what's going to happen after because at the moment, if you can see here, I mean, last time Time we tested the, uh, in uh, the 200 day EMA um, well from above I would say it was the uh, at the end of February of 2020 and then we basically saw this huge rollover I mean huge drop in the market uh, it was panic mode here but again uh, since then as you can see here we've recovered sh sharply so uh, in other words I would say um, for now be very careful uh, for now be very cautious um, yes I mean never the the skeptics the the pessimists the 
the bears are really looking forward maybe for this one to uh, drift heavily to the downside we could don't get me wrong anything is possible but um, at the moment let's go slowly step by step on this one and uh, keep an eye on the news of course um, on the big uh, on the bigger picture and uh, let's see um how the fed in general reacts to all this because at the moment the talks are that um the fed is planning to raise interest rates somewhere around maybe march time but um again uh, will they go ahead with that well we'll just wait and see um but uh for now for now yeah the uh, the the general picture here is there's a bit gloomy on the indices so yeah uh the only thing is we can what we can do is try to take um, advantage of movement either direction doesn't matter but yeah you know we we just need to do it very carefully and not to be too greedy uh, dxy the dollar index so jumping into this one and uh, well there we go we popped above the 95.52 zone right here so that's good news and uh, yeah, we traveled higher. We all, well, we reached the 21-day EMA. Uh, we did briefly push above it uh, yesterday and today as well. But um, yeah, we're now back below it. However, that that's okay still because we are back above this 95.52 zone. So um, leaning a little bit more maybe towards the upside, uh, towards this downside line, um, because I want to see if it's going to hold or not. If it does, then well, another slide here could be possible. However, if it gets broken, well, this. This is where uh, it could be quite interesting for a few more buyers. So keep that in mind. Uh, jumping into gold. Um, so gold continues to correct uh, lower. However, as you can see, this correction lower is in the form of a possible flag. So in, in all this here, maybe this is forming a possible bullish flag. However, if it is the case, then we still need to see that confirmation break here through this area, through the uh, levels here between the uh, 18, 1829 and the 1831 levels here. And if we clear that, then yes, this will confirm a forthcoming higher high and potentially more buyers could join in. Now, um, if we, if, if that's the case, if that happens, then our next target will be this downside line taken from the high of the 1st of June. Uh, now, um, in a way, for now, I would say um, at this point, I would I would pr probably play the waiting game. It's not really, let's say, very attractive for the downside uh, because we're still trading above all of the EMAs and those continue to hold. And this, like I said, with the upside, we still could see maybe this one drifting to the downside a little bit. So that's why we will wait for that uh, pot, nice pop here first, and then we'll take it from there. Now, uh, jumping into WTI oil, so the the, the culprit. Uh, uh, for the energy sector kind of pushing higher and look at this I mean we've cleared that uh, highlighted territory the one that I was talking about so um, I'm very very curious if this is gonna stay for this week um, if it's gonna stay above this highlighted territory because given that yes and now I initially I was looking at this and maybe considering a possible um, range here. Yes, I'm gonna still consider that because I wanna keep an eye on the weekly chart now. So this is gonna be my kind of last uh, resort to maybe co uh, to consider this as a possible range. If by the end of the week, let's say on Friday, it's in, uh, the, it ends the week below, still below this highlighted territory, well, then we'll, we'll have a, a very strong area of resistance. And this could, may lead to maybe a bit of a tracement here however if we stay if we stay above uh, this area for the remaining of this week and then yeah well I mean that means that we could continue seeing this one pushing further north so again for now the theory is this uh, let's keep an eye on it let's keep an eye on the market let's keep an eye on any news coming out uh, surrounding oil so uh, but from the technical side, I mean, for uh, I need to see um, a nice, good, strong move back below this highlighted territory, and uh, um, even better, I would prefer to see a drop below this uh, downside line again. Um, and then, yeah, we'll we could take it from there. Uh, I know that this downside line got violated, so it maybe not is not no longer kind of relevant. But for the sake of it, I just want to see if uh, how it's going to play out in relation to this downside line so I'm just that's why I'm gonna keep it now keep it keep an eye on it for now uh, 
Bitcoin. So Bitcoin uh, is drifting uh, still to the downside, as you can see. Yesterday, it kind of tried to fight it a little bit. Try to try to fight this hurdle, this 4,100. Uh, sorry, 41,634 level, which is the lowest point of December. Um, again, I would say it still is okay. Everything's still okay here for the bulls because. Uh, basically, um, the uh, the crypto still is respecting this level, this area right here, the lowest point of December. Uh, we are seeing these little drops below this hurdle, but but um, the area is still kind of respected. Now, of course, uh, crypto enthusiasts maybe hope that this could maybe be that nice floor here from where the crypto might rebound. Um, yes. Could be the case. However, for now, from the just purely technical side, um, it's leaning a little bit more towards the downside. So that's why I'm going to be very careful for now. We're, we're still trading below this downside line. Um, and looking at the upside, I mean, uh, this is where I'll adjust my level a little bit. Looking at the upside, I would prefer to um, maybe wait for a push above the high of the 13th of January right here uh, near the 44,445 level. Um, at the same time, if we break this downside line, we push above the 21 day EMA and if we push above this barrier, yep, uh, more potentially more buyers could join in. And another thing, if we, for example, do reverse from here, uh, somewhere around here and then go for that breakout uh, of this downside line and, and this level. Um, this would basically mean that we, yes, first of all, we're going for a higher high and uh, second that we have formed a higher low, which could be the beginning of something interesting for the bulls. But again, let's not rush into anything for now. Let's keep an eye on these uh, levels here. And uh, yeah, uh, let's see how all this is going to play out. Um, jumping into a few pairs very quickly. So AUD USD, so a quick update on this one and look at this beautiful rebound here. So uh, my arrow needs to go back a little bit right there. Um, so if this upside line continues somehow to provide support, um, I will stick to the upside because at the moment we're in, at an interesting spot here. As you can see, uh, we um, we are kind of stuck in between these two lines. So if you're looking for some higher levels, then uh, wait for this one and maybe wait for at least a push back above the 21 day EMA. If it doesn't happen and if we break the upside line and we drop below the 0 0.7130 territory right here marked by the low the 7th of January, which is also the low point of January, uh, then yes, that's where I'm going to get a little bit more comfortable with the downside. Um, and then I'll start aiming slowly uh, to the uh, slowly lower. And my next target will be the 0 0.7082 zone or uh, maybe even the uh, the lowest point of December. That's what we could be aiming for. But again, at the moment, just be very careful for now. We're still trading above the upside line. If we climb back above the um, above the 21 day EMA or even better, if we climb climb back above some of these levels here, the 0 0.7229, then yes, uh, we could maybe consider uh, a bit of a move to the upside. Um, jumping into AUD CAD. So of course, for obvious reasons, this pair is drifting lower. I mean, we have the Canadian dollar, which is benefiting from the stronger uh, uh, oil price. And uh, yep, uh, we have managed to reach this area. I talked about the uh, this hurdle, the 0 0.80, 0 0.8972 zone. Um, we just fell shy by a few points from reaching it. But to be honest, that's okay. That's quite uh, that we already kind of like I said it's it's already looking good here um, the big question here is now can we rebound or can we actually break this well for now uh, looking at this picture if if the trend continues to the downside then well I mean we're looking for some uh, further declines um, of course a break below this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and potentially more uh, sellers could join in the only thing is what I would like to suggest here is to uh, keep your eyes on on the trade activity and let's say if it does break what you know with what strength uh, will uh, with with what strength will, will the breakout will be um, and will it stay actually eventually below this hurdle or not or will it just show us a false breakout and you know and climb up back up and if so then maybe this could be seen as a double bottom in the end you know so there's a lot to consider here 
Um, that's why be very careful for now. Um, if we do break this area right, right here and stay below it, then yes, I will continue aiming to the downside. Now, um, so in terms of the upside, again, that, like I said, that's the game plan for the upside as well, because again, I'm looking at uh, this hurdle. I mean, if, if it's going to provide support, then yes, great, uh, uh, great news uh, for the bulls, of course. Uh, USDJPY. So uh, drifted back down, and uh, this is where uh, it's quite interesting <laughs> because basically, drift, I talked about this pair um, yesterday, and uh, I talked about this, this, uh, these down, the, the downside line, this upside line. Is said that although we have broken those I mean I'll keep them for now and somehow they are uh, playing out here especially this downside line so we had a, a false breakout yesterday we reached this uh, this 115 08-07 level almost yeah and uh, yep uh, it, it provided very nice um, it provided very nice resistance and there we go we're drifting back down of course the market yesterday sold off so that's why uh, yen buying kind of in, uh, increased um, and the, what I was saying as well that um, I would prefer actually to see a drop below the this inside swing high of the 14th of January which is around the 114.26 level and uh, well I mean we we're currently getting a hold up near this area so that it means that uh, this level seems to be a little bit more on the um, kind of on the stronger side so we need to see a clear drop below this in order to go for lower level so it's good this is the pretty straightforward here um, analysis on USD JPY. USD CAD um, also quite interesting because overall of course we're still trading below this downside line taken from the high of the 20th of December um, but um, but uh, yeah, I mean, here I've marked this level previously, and so far, although we keep getting these overshoots here, these uh, these breakouts, but um, the pair still climbs back above it. Old and although. Um, the uh, oil is pushing a little bit uh, to the upside. I mean, USD CAD is holding off here. I mean, well, I mean, we understand why because DXY uh, had a good run yesterday and might have a con con continuation run to the upside today as, uh, as well. But we'll be very careful here. And this is going to be an interesting uh, moment uh, on who's going to out pull who, you know, because it will be the strength of oil uh, help out, it will be enough for. For the Canadian dollar to continue pushing, uh, or to, to, to pushing uh, higher against the U.S. dollar, uh, or will the U.S. dollar actually take you know the lead in here and uh, rebound and push back to the upside on this pair? So. Again, uh, this is going to be a bit of a, a, a gamble here, I would say. At the moment, I don't see anything clear, um, apart from the fact that, yes, the current trend is still to the downside, so in a way it could still drift lower, but um, we do have a bit of space here, which could be filled up nicely, so that's why I'm going to be uh, taking a very careful approach, and probably with USD CAD, I'm just going to observe this one, observe the price action, and uh, um, and uh, wait for something maybe a little bit more reassuring. Uh, GBP and ZD. So I haven't looked at this one for quite a while, um, but previously when I talked about this, I talked about this 2.0075 level, uh, which is the highest point of um, August. So, <laughs> excuse me. Um, and the th also the thing that the thing that we are uh, trading above this upside line taken from the low of the 8th of November, that also is quite interesting here because um, yeah, the steep upside line is still intact, but can it be uh, finally a breakout here? Well, uh, probably we'll have to stick to this level as well, just in case. So this 1.9940 zone, that's going to be my more comfortable level after a break of which I could consider maybe a bit of a decline here. So for now, um, just looking at this, I mean, it's not really... Um, it's not really looking uh, interesting f uh, for both sides yet because for the upside I would need to see maybe a push above the current highest point uh, of January just to be a little bit more on the safe side let me just uh, grab one of these lines and recycle that and put put it here so that's what I need here 2.0152 a break off I need a break off that level in order to um, go for some higher levels uh, for the downside as I 
side, I need to see a drop below this 1.9940 zone. And uh, finally, Euro USD. Um, so we beautifully dropped lower, and there we go. This is what I say, uh, said to you guys that um, the fact that we were still. Uh, when I was running the video, we were still trading above the downside line and above this hurdle. So I said that as long as it stays above that area, then yeah, I'm going to be leaning a little bit more towards the upside. But it didn't. It dropped below it and uh, yep. Yeah, uh, it drifted back below the, even the 21-day EMA. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, a lot of pessimism here. Um, however, we still have the last chance for the bulls here. We have this upside line, which could play out. And if we um, if we hold on to it, um, maybe then there could be a bit of hope here for the bulls again. But if we don't, then guys, well, this could be opening the door towards lower levels. So keep that in mind. So, um, so yeah, that's it for this recorded session, guys. It, again, once again, apologies for yesterday's video. You know, I tried to do it live, but unfortunately, uh, my internet was not strong enough. But uh, hopefully, you'll enjoy this recording video. Um, we'll get back to live. Uh, should be getting back to live next week. Mm, but for till the rem like I said, for the remaining of this week and uh, the um, the videos will be recorded. So. Uh, Thank you very much for watching and listening, guys. I really appreciate your time. Um, if you want to catch me tomorrow morning, as always, at Matraders Espresso, 7 o'clock GMT time. Thank you very much, and bye-bye.